Hey guys, I wanted to do some videos about Type Orm. I've been using it the last couple of weeks and really enjoying it. Uh, it's been much nicer than using SQLize and it integrates really well with TypeScript and uh, Visual Studio Code and auto completion is really sweet. So what I want to do in this video is show you how to do, go through the getting started, set up a database, and then in future videos kind of show you how I like to use it and get some things set up, relationships, and how to do all the CRUD operations and all that fun stuff. So first off, I want to get this started with the, um, the project that I set up yesterday, the boilerplate. So I'm going to add it to this project. If you want to follow along and add it to this project as well, I'll put the link in the description uh, below but we're just gonna follow along with the getting started. So first off, let's take a look at how you create tables. So with Typeform, you create these things called uh, entities, which are basically classes where you specify um, the column. Now notice, uh, well you specify the name of your table and then all the columns in it. Notice how there's this thing here and there's this thing here. So this is the TypeScript type so this is a number, this is a string, and this is uh, the column. And in the at, when you do at column like that, you actually can specify the type that you want the column to be. So you could have it as a text, you could have it as a varchar. They're not doing it here. They're having it uh, just inherit or interpret what the type should be based on a colon string here. But we'll talk more about how to specify the column types in a little bit. So if we scroll down a little farther, we'll find the installation. And to install this is actually uh, a little interesting. They use this thing called Reflect Metadata. So we need to install not just Typeform, but Typeform, Reflect Metadata, and the driver. Now I'm gonna use PostgreSQL, but feel free to use uh, any one you prefer. So let's go ahead and install yarn add Postgres, Typeform, and Reflect, Reflect metadata and I I don't have types for a node I don't think installed yet um, nope I don't those are good to have uh, cannot find metadata because I spelled it wrong uh, and I'll go ahead and also install this and I'm gonna install the type as a, a dev dependency yarn add dev okay so next thing is to set up, uh, see right here they have uh, some things we have to change in our TypeScript file. So I am not emitting decorator metadata or adding this experimental decor experimental decorators right now, but we're about to run type orm init, which will actually do this for us. So they have this, so you can go ahead and install type orm globally if you'd like, and then you can use the CLI to auto create a project. Uh, I already have Typeform installed, so I'm not going to run this, but if you'd like to, go ahead and do that. I'm going to copy this, though. This is actually going to overwrite some of the things in our code, but after it overwrites it, I'm just going to grab it with git. So this is a dangerous thing to run if you already have a project set up, but I have this using git so I can revert some things. So here's how it's going to work. So I just basically reverted my typescript.config file, right? but really I only need these two lines from it. So I'm gonna just say git checkout and then tsconfig and this will go ahead and check it out at the last version. So now I have it back to where I like it and I'm just gonna paste these two options in. Okay, and the reason why I did run that is, and I don't care about the readme, just delete that. Um, it adds an entity and migration folder and it's set up an orm config. This is the most important part the orm config is I want, wanted them to set up. Um, entity migration is good. You'll notice that they messed up index that TypeScript as well, so I'm just gonna do git checkout source index.typescript. And now you can add this manually if you prefer as well. Okay, so this orm config is gonna be how we access the database. So it's gonna be, well, we're gonna create a connection to the database and uh, it's gonna know that information from right here. And let's take a look at the entity created. So has a user. Now I noticed that it was giving me this error about the constructor. And that was because I have these two rules, strict and strict property initialization. When I get rid of those, 
um, the lines go away. So I went ahead and just removed those rules since there's really no reason for these to give me errors. Okay, so I wanna now actually create a database and create this one table in my database. So to do that, and they actually had that, we're gonna need to pass all these things in. So let's add that to ORM config. So these are my uh, my things. So for me, this is how you access the database. So I'm gonna do Postgres, and it's on localhost, it's on that. My username, I'm gonna say, oops, I went back one too far, Postgres. My username, I'm gonna say is Postgres. I actually haven't set up a database for this yet, so we're gonna find out if this actually creates a database for you or not. So I'm gonna say tester2, okay. And you'll notice how it points to the entity folder right here. Um, that's how you know where your entities are. And the reason why you do ORM config is for two reasons. One, I now don't have all my password, my usernames on GitHub, because I can just change my git ignore to add a, uh, or is it? I should have ORM config in here, but it doesn't. Dot ORM config. There you go. So we add dot ORM config to this, and now my ORM config will not go to, um, oh, ORM config dot JSON. I just totally typed the wrong thing. I'm used to doing dot in files. Anyway, so now I won't have this exposed on GitHub when I sync up. And also, uh, this is good because they have a CLI that you can use or command line tool. So when you run that, it will read from this ORM config. Okay, so we have this set up. How do we actually create a connection and have it create the tables? Now notice I have the word synchronize true here. So that will that tells uh, type ORM to actually create the tables if they don't exist and all that fun stuff. So here, and there's an important thing we need to add to the top. You know that weird thing we just installed? Um, reflect metadata? We need to import this at the top. Reflect metadata. It uses this for something and has you do that. So here I wanna start a connection. So I'm gonna say get connection. And this is what I was talking about with auto completion. You notice how I haven't imported it yet. And I can just type get connection and it'll go ahead and auto complete for me and add it, which is really sweet. So here you can specify all the things we specified in ORM config, but it'll go ahead and read ORM config automatically. So that's how it knows where all your stuff is. And then I'm gonna say dot then. So after it goes ahead and reads that, I'm gonna go just start the server. And this will actually have a connection if you want it. And, um, oh, I wanna create a connection, not get a connection. I just did the wrong thing. I was like, why didn't it have a dot then? Okay, so we're creating the connection, not getting the connection. And then after we create the connection, we're just gonna start the server. All right, so let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. So I'm just gonna do npm start and see if it creates a database for us. Okay, cannot read property name of undefined. Okay, so I figured out the issue. I was just being a noob and forgot to change the port. The correct port is four or five, four, three, two, and uh, just change it in ORM config. So now, if I go ahead and run npm start, it'll tell us our database is does not exist, right? So I just need to add that. So I already have Postgres installed and all that stuff on my computer. So to create a database, I can just say create DB and then the name of it, which I'm gonna call tester2. So I'm gonna do npm start after it's created and the server is up running on localhost 4000. So I can go ahead and do psql on tester2. And if I do backslash D, it'll go ahead and tell me all the tables in the database and we can describe user itself. And uh, very cool, so this is our table. We see first name, last name, and age. So let's play around with it real quick. So over here, so this. So I mentioned earlier about how this is where you specify the type. You actually pass what you want it to be right here. And then this is the uh, TypeScript type. So for example, this could be text, right? So there's this thing in Postgres called text, and that is the field for, and we can make both these texts. Right now they are character varying, 
but text means they, uh, I think they can be as big as they want. So if we just describe this again, I don't know if it auto syncs or not. And it didn't restart. We'll have it run again. Uh, all right, so let's see if it changed the database. And we go ahead and we see that these are both text. And now we can also specify, for example, the type. And notice you can see all the different, did it tell me? It was telling me right here. Uh, you can see all the different types that you could possibly have um, for your column. And so I could say varchar, and you can specify the length. And let's say I want the length to be maybe 230. And now we can add more columns. And this is where you specify any kind of uh, special things you want, default values. So for example, I might wanna set the default age, not the default age, but uh, confirmation. So common thing is like confirmation email. So I might have a type of Boolean and I'll set the default to false. And this is going to be confirmed, right? So they have not confirmed their email yet. And I'm gonna create this as a Boolean type. And so here I wanna create an email. So that's gonna be of type, I'll make it a text. You could make it a varchar too. Um, and then here, so let's call it email, name of the column. And I want it to be unique, so I'll say unique is true. And one of the nice things about um, this being integrated with TypeScript is let's say I do a bad column, it'll tell me right away. Like instead of Boolean, let's say I did bool. I, bool might actually be accepted but I randomly put an E at the end. It'll be like, hey, that type doesn't exist. So that's really nice. So it catches things really early. So now we can see unique and default will be added. Now I don't know why um, node daemon is not just listening. Is node daemon not getting started? Oh, you know what? Did it override package.json? It did. I didn't even realize that. It went ahead and, well, it didn't override it. It just disappeared. So maybe, what's it called? Uh, when I did that initialization of the project, it also changed package.json and got rid of nodeman running. Okay, we got that. So now we have our new user which has confirmed, which is a Boolean, the default false. So pretty sweet. So this is how you go about and create just the table and the database and change up the columns. Um, next, what we'll do in the next video, and oh, real quick, you can also change the name. Like uh, we could call it Bob. That's a really bad name for a table. Never call it Bob. But uh, I don't know what it's gonna do actually. Let's see what happens. All right, so now we have Bob, so it kept user. But now we have a Bob table with all the columns you would expect. So that's how you can uh, specify the user, or not the user, the name of the table. I'm curious whether it will go ahead and just drop Bob. Okay, it does not drop Bob, even though Bob no longer is being used. So that's pretty interesting. Okay, but that is how you set up your tables and then how you specify the types of each column and how you might change any variables you wanna pass into it to change it and modify it. What we'll do in the next video is look at how you can do create, read, update, delete with all these things. That's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching.